I was always fascinated by the music of Orff. And um, yeah, it's such an opulent, uh, strong orchestral music. And uh, actually my idea of the concept and what fascinated me about doing the piece was hearing the music, the vulnerability of men in front of his destiny. The opulence and the, let's say, heaviness of the music makes uh, men look even more frail in front of this unknown destiny that is awaiting him. I think we all are aware that uh, despite all our effort to make things happen, uh, there are the unexpected. There is the actual casualty of things. And um, so I, I really do believe that, I, I also do believe in work and also do believe in, in personal conviction and strength. But we're all in the hands of something bigger than us. The case of Horf is a figure of fortune which I did introduce in the ballet because the three main themes of Carmina are fortune and destiny, the arrival of spring, so awakening of love, awakening of sexual desires, and then the tavern which is the symbol of uh, uh, religion and what religion can do if it's pushed down for a long time. And some of the, of the songs in Carmina are also very from a religious point of view, they are a bit, uh, you know, irreverent, let's say, because they reveal, again, the frailty of human nature. You know, one is really obsessed with religion, but the sexual desire is there. So, you know, then I introduce some figure of monks, because I do very shortly, and their strong desire to, you know, to, to, to have uh, a normal relationship. So there is, again, comes back to the frailty of men, you know, so that's, uh, let's say, the fortune chapter, the uh, spring chapter, the tavern chapter, the love chapter, which is uh, lots of times intended as a kind of unfulfilled uh, relationship. Most of the songs think about a lover that is far away, or that is not here, or that is, uh, it, there, is there is never really a fulfilled kind of of relation in this song. Yeah.